We already had a look at the frequency domain in the last video and now we come back to this again. So here in the first diagram we have our um, signal, our original signal in the time, uh, sorry, in the frequency domain here. It fulfills our Channon Nyquist something theorem. So it is within half of the something frequency. And in the diagram below, there's our direct comp, the um, series of direct delta pulses. And now both sig um, signals are convoluted and we get our spectrum of the sample signal. The spectrum of the sample signal contains the spectrum of the original signal and all its repeti repetitions. Remember, these repetitions are present in a definite amount of times here. So they would continue indefinitely. But if we look at this spectrum, we see a lot of redundant information here. So in this part, there is the same information like in this, and in this, and in this, and so on. This is because the spectrum is per periodic uh, with a periodicity of the sampling frequency. And uh, as you can imagine, this is not an optimal representation because we have so much redundant information here. And the question is, can we find a way to drop all the redundant information and just focus on the information here? on the in original information. And there is um, a method to uh, um, only focus on one uh, sample of the original information. And this is the time discrete Fourier transform, which we will consider here in this video. So now let's take a step back before sampling, um, we use the um, Fourier transform to describe the frequency domain of the signal. So we and, uh, and until now we just called it Fourier transform, but um, to eliminate ambiguity, we now call it continuous time Fourier transform because the Fourier transform that we have learned in chapter two operates on time continuous signals. So now we are, uh, we name it the continuous time for your transform or CTFT. And we use this for your transform to describe our original analog signal here. This is the formal definition of the for your transform. And now we sample the signal. Sampling means multiplying it with the direct comp in the time domain or convoluted with a Fourier transform. In this case, we mean, mean the continuous time Fourier transform of the direct comp, which itself is a direct comp in the frequency domain. And after sampling, we get the uh, spectrum of the sample signal, which contains all the repetitions and redundant information. And now we do some magic, we redefine it and, and use another frequency parameter. So for the continuous time Fourier transform, we had the omega here as the frequency parameter. In fact, it is the angular frequency, also used here. And we convert this frequency parameter into another representation here. So it is not 
any longer isolated like here it is now part of um, an exponential function but of a special exponential function because my the j here and this means that the exponential function draws a unit circle mm, like like this and now uh, the frequency variable omega so or angular frequency is part of the argument of the unit circle yeah so this is our angel phi for example and now our um, frequency parameter is part of the argument and now we see the um, why why this notation is is uh, of our benefit because um, now we can describe all the redundant information just by by using this um, the the frequency variable in the argument of our exponential function. So um, we said that the spectrum is omega s periodic and the sampling frequency just equals a full rotation here on the unit circle. So Im imagine that we start at omega zero, omega uh, equals zero. And now we go to half omega s and this will be this point here. So half rotation. And now, um, if we move on to um, the full sampling, sampling frequency, so omega s, we do another half rotation and then we are at the original point here again. So here. And if we go back to the um, previous light. This means that we went from here to here and we see that the value in the spectrum is equal in at, at both uh, frequency points. And this is what, what we've got here. So the formal definition of this new notation with the um, frequency variable in the argument of the exponential function is this one here and this is our discrete time Fourier transform which we now use to describe the um, Fourier transform of our sample signal as I said in the previous slide we have uh, some variations of the discrete time Fourier transform which is, which is abbreviated by DTFT um, so it can be normalized to the sampling frequency remember the sampling frequency is connected with um, the sampling period and um, In this form, we use this equation to define the DTFT and we can uh, y define also the inverse discrete time for your transform here. And uh, please um, note that we use a sum 
for the DTF team and we sum our discrete um, a time discrete signal here so remember that now we have discrete times and our time index is, is n here and because we have discrete times we can use the discrete sum whereas for the inverse DTFT we use the integral which is kind of a continuous sum yeah so here discrete sum continuous sum and again here our time index is n so for this notation we used the um, omega s periodicity of the spectrum of the frequency domain of the sample signal but as i said in the previous slide the um, periodicity comes from the rotation in the unit circle and the full rotation in a circle means 2p or 260 degree yeah, but we use the notation in, in radians so 2p and we get to an alternative form which uses phi as the frequency variable it is it shows up here and here and here again and again we see here our discrete sum with the discrete time index here here two and here we have our continuous sum and you see uh, something else um, whereas here we integrate over the full period which um, would be omega s we now also integrate over a full period which is 2p yeah um, but we uh, normalize it to 2p but anyway both notations are equivalent so our frequency variable phi can be rewritten using the uh, frequency variable omega and the sampling period which is a constant in our sampled system yeah, it is defined by the sampling clock and yeah, therefore constant so it actually it, it doesn't matter which notation you use but you have to be careful um, and you should know at any time which normalization you use because the notation is different and some details like the integration parameters and the coefficients are different as well so be careful and last point um, in the lecture notes you have read that the continuous time for for your transform is based on the Laplace transform the Laplace transform is a general case of the Fourier transform and notation is, is kind kind of similar and it has a complex frequency variable s and it consists of our imaginary part which we use for the Fourier transform here and there's a real part two but for the Fourier transform we consider the steady state case so we set the real part to zero what does it mean 
So if, if you do the Laplace transform, you um, get a value for each um, vel um, point in the frequency domain, so for each complex frequency variable, but for the Fourier transform, you just extract all the values on the imaginary axis, because the real part is zero. You need the Laplace transform to analyze the stability of systems, for example. Um, but as we mostly care about steady state signals, we s can set the real part to zero and uh, use the continuous time for your transform. Uh, this was already explained in chapter 2. And now um, we have the discrete time for your transform, which is a special case of the that transform. So please refer to the le lecture notes to get further information on this. And this uh, that transform also has a special frequency parameter. It's a complex frequency parameter too. And it consists um, also of a real and imaginary part, but we don't use Cartesian notation like here for the CTFT, now we have the polar notation. And we have the argument of Z here, which is what we have al already seen in the discrete time Fourier transform. And then there is uh, the, the magnitude, which is set to just one for the steady state case, which is used in the discrete time for your transform. So here both cases are steady state. So the Z transform also would calculate the frequency domain for any value of Z. But for the discrete time for your transform, we just extract the values on the unit circle. Uh, bad unit circle, it actually should hit here, but however, this is this. So, uh, and again, we would use the um, Z transform to analyze, for example, the stability of digital systems. So, if you come to a point where you design real digital communication systems and its components, then this would be relevant. So you need to do stability analysis as an engineer uh, for, for digital systems. But for now, uh, we just neglect this um, fact and just focus on the steady state case to describe our steady state signals. 